Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today. Thank you guys for waiting. Um, we have a lot of great content we're going to be talking about. Today's topic is all about how to streamline your back office. Uh, we have some great speakers on our call today who I'm going to, go to, who I'm going to introduce shortly. Uh, but before we get started, I just have a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, we want everyone to ask questions during the webinar. And the easiest way to do it is to use the Q&A box in your webinar panel. We're going to um, uh, ask the questions in the Q&A session at the end of the presentation as time allows. So please submit your questions in the box. Um, also, we are recording today and we will be sharing a link to the webinar recording as well as the slides, which you'll get 24 to 48 hours after the webinar. So keep a lookout for an email from us. Sometimes these emails get stuck in spam folders, so please make sure to check that. If you don't receive an email, you can always reach out to the Arminino team. So who do we have on the call today? Well, we have uh, John Kogan. He's a director of our strategic finance outsourcing group, which is part of our broader consulting group here at Armenino. We have Shannon Oswald, who is a director of our HR outsourcing group and really leads that, uh, that team. Um, we have Andrea Mannering. She's a senior manager of a strategic finance outsourcing uh, group. We have Mike Plasek, who's a senior manager of our accounting outsourcing group, and Alicia Baum, who's a senior manager of our accounting outsourcing group as well, but she's really our tech expert on this call today. What are we going to be talking about? Well, um, we are going to be talking about like what are our experts seeing in the market? What are some problems and pain points and how do we solve for them? What is this new solution that we keep talking to you guys about, right? The back office bundle. And then we're going to uh, end the conversation with some conclusion and key takeaways and obviously uh, have a Q&A session as we said. And so with that, I'm going to hand it over to John, who's going to be our host for our panel discussion. Great, thank you very much, Sarah. Appreciate that uh, introduction. Um, today, we're going to be focused on um, one of the great challenges of, of small and mid-sized companies, which is uh, dealing with service providers um, or trying to DIY the back office yourself. Um, so uh, the front end of uh, this presentation today is really going to be a discussion uh, between myself and a number of our back office vertical experts. Um, and uh, we've got a, a lot of great uh, insight here um, across the group. So we're looking forward to bringing that out uh, today. Uh, managing back office providers can be a real headache. Um, there are typically many of them. They're disjointed, don't communicate terribly well with one another. Uh, it takes a lot of time and energy um, to get what you need out of them. Uh, and that impacts uh, you and your available time as a company leader. Um, and it also, of course, uh, impacts your company. Uh, if you're not getting the best out of um, your providers or if you're DIYing some of this, which certainly many uh, small and, and growth company leaders do, um, then you might be diverting your time and attention from the truly high value tasks that your investors and board probably want you uh, paying attention to. And um, we're here to uh, give you a little insight into um, some of the key pain points and uh, insights into you know how you might be able to handle uh, certain issues more effectively. Uh, we've put uh, these challenges today into five broad buckets and we'll hit them more or less in this order. Uh, number one, human capital. Uh, number two, lack of visibility to and understanding of the economics of your business, the core economics of your business. Uh, number three, process challenges. Number four, distraction from uh, growing your business and, uh, and developing your products. Uh, and finally, technology. Uh, so without further ado, why don't we go ahead and get into the conversation. Um, first, um, let's uh, address human capital challenges, and we're going to go uh, right to Shannon Oswald. Um, Shannon, we know that employee retention is a, a tremendous problem for many companies, uh, especially those that don't have you know, full investment in their human resources uh, capability, everything from bad hires to insufficient benefits leading to high turnover. Um, what are some of the best practices that you think uh, company leaders should consider to attract and retain top quality talent and avoid employee turnover? 
And Shannon, you are muted. Just unmuted. So Sweet. thanks, John. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, definitely the cost of retaining and attracting good employees, the overhead costs that the people at an organization create is actually one of the highest costs of running a business. So it really makes sense to spend a lot of time and energy in maintaining the quality of that experience for employees. One thing that I tell a lot of our clients and when I talk to business owners, no matter how large or small a client is, it's always possible to be what, what I would consider a client or a uh, an employer of choice in the marketplace, somewhere where people want to go and they want to stay. The way to do that is to pay attention to the HR, payroll, benefits, infrastructure at a company and to make sure you're set up for success from the beginning and that you're offering a good environment, opportunities, and also benefits for your employees. So it really behooves business owners to focus on that area, keep their people happy, and that just leads to more good hires in the future. And retention of, of great talent that you've managed to attract so far, undoubtedly. Um, related, uh, frequently put in the same bucket, although uh, the tasks are, are dissimilar, um, managing payroll can be really time consuming and uh, fraught with risk. Um, like potentially very expensive and damaging risk to the company. Um, what are some things uh, you think leaders should do or can do uh, to reduce uh, payroll related risk? Well, for sure, wage and hour claims are expensive. Even if you know an employer feels like they were diligent and they tried their best to comply with whatever requirements they have, it's difficult to defend those types of claims and quite often leads to penalties and or other costs for the company. So again, having a really strong process, good understanding of what the requirements are and a diligence in sticking to those concepts is very important for employers. We see a lot of activity with, as I said, wage and hour claims regarding overtime, payment of overtime, um, whether an employee is classified correctly as exempt from overtime or not, whether an employee is classified correctly as an employee or a contractor, uh, also a hot topic in a lot of states right now. So there are a lot of things that employers need to know and understand when they undertake the venture of having an employee population. And it really does behoove them to be educated and have a good structure around their policies and how they treat their employees and how they schedule out their payrolls. Uh, related question, Shannon, I'm gonna come back to you with, with one quick follow on here. Um, if you're using a third party payroll company, then poof, do your problems disappear or do you still have the same problems? You're just doing it on someone else's platform. Yeah, so you know, a lot of times the payroll companies are in fact a platform. So the subscription fee that you pay to use them is the access to the technology. It's a software program that has tax tables loaded into it and it can be very effective in processing payroll. However, there are very human decisions that need to be made along the way. For instance, a payroll provider will probably not push back if you're hiring someone as an exempt employee who probably should be eligible for overtime. Um, they probably won't push back on the contractor employee question either or get into that conversation with employers. So in addition to having strong technology to process payroll, it's good for employers to also have guidance or have an understanding of what's really required so they can make informed decisions. Great, thank you. Um, Mike, uh, still on the sort of human capital side of things here. Um, uh, great accounting talent is really hard to come by um, and uh, and hard to retain uh, if you're fortunate enough to find it. Um, from your perspective, what are some of the biggest challenges to you know both finding and retaining talent uh, in accounting? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of uh, challenges that come with turnover. I mean, first, like you mentioned, it's just the time to go and, and go and find the, the right person. Um, Second is just to uh, to find the person with the right skill set and then be able to train them. But I think the the largest uh, thing with employee turnover is just losing knowledge, knowledge of the history, 
knowledge of procedures, um, just knowledge of what's been done in the past. And sometimes in a small and growing company, um, maybe one person knows how to do something or knows what's happened in the past. So I think you have a, a real chance of just uh, losing a lot of that history and having to recreate it or make mistakes along the way to, to um, come back from it and get somebody else doing the position. Uh, and Mike, follow on question here. Um, when um, you know we're stepping in and taking over accounting for clients, um, do you find that it's common that the technical accounting and or controllering skills of, you know, the bookkeepers or folks that they've had in place uh, have been lacking um, when we step in? Yeah, a lot of times people have started with, with a bookkeeper. Um, they've maybe started the company, but they're a bookkeeper. They're not an accountant. So maybe they've, they've been able to get bills paid, but they haven't been able to, you know, check their financial statements. They haven't been uh, monitoring the balance sheet doing account reconciliations and things like that. Um, so, you know, the work we do is more, definitely more accounting than just bookkeeping and, and you know, making sure your financials are in the best shape possible. Gotcha. Um, all right, so just having a bookkeeper is also not a cure-all for accounting. No, actually you can get yourself in more trouble with a bookkeeper than, than uh, if you do proper accounting. Um, all right, uh, Shannon, if a leader is experiencing staffing challenges uh, and uncertainty um, in their company, what are some tips for effectively dealing with that? If a leader is experiencing staffing challenges, difficulties, employee relations issues, things like that, I think it's important for that leader to rely on an HR professional to come in and evaluate the situation, perhaps do an assessment of current morale, current benefits, what is the employee experience? Because it's it's important to remember that just as onboarding an employee in a positive way and making them feel good about coming into work, it's also important to manage how people leave the job too. Um, so as people leave, you want them to feel good about the company and continue to sort of spread the word of why it's a good place to work. Um, if that's not happening, it could be an issue. Additionally, it's really important for leaders to be plugged into the culture of their corporation, to understand the levers that are available to them, things that are valuable to their employees. Some things are important to certain employee populations that are not as important to other employee populations. So good to be plugged into that. If a leader is really dedicated to learning what would make their employees experience better at work, and also willing to implement some of those changes in order to manage their workplace, they should be in a pretty good spot. If they have a few things to clean up, HR can help with that also, um, any grievances, et cetera. But in general, I think just being aware of what's going on at the workplace and being willing to step in and change is important. Great, thank you. Um, Andrea, one function that is uh, never missing at large companies, but frequently missing at small and mid-sized companies or growth companies, um, and is directly related, related to uh, the human capability of a company is finance. Uh, many small companies just don't have finance. Um, and um, what are the, uh, you know, when we don't see a finance function at small companies, only accounting, um, you know, what are some of the outcomes um, that we experience? Yeah, thanks, John. Um, so first, one moment on uh, the difference between accounting and finance. Uh, accounting is uh, looks backwards. It's record keeping. It's essential. Um, many small companies and growth companies don't have finance, but they always typically have some form of accounting or bookkeeping, to Mike's point. And finance is all about the uh, why and the how of your uh, company's economics. So um, understanding um, your core economics and charting a path towards your future, that's what finance does. And um, you run a risk when you don't have finance capabilities. Uh, you know, founders, leaders, CEOs are can be great at running their businesses through their instincts, um, but at a certain point, you want um, more strategic, data-driven decision-making capabilities, and that's what finance can provide. Um, and you know, why also does it make sense for finance to sit at that? Uh, leadership table for companies. Um, you know, what what outcomes are they helping ensure? 
Well, you're protecting uh, yourself by having finance. Uh, you're protecting and planning. So by having finance at the table, all all decisions at companies have underlying inherent uh, economics, and finance is really the capability that owns economics. Uh, very interesting perspective. Um, what uh, should leaders expect from finance if they're bringing that to bear? Uh, really a business partner that is going to keep them on track towards their uh, their dream state. So it could be exit, could be more uh, cash producing, could be more profitable. Um, whatever their dream state is, uh, finance can keep you uh, focused on that path. Great. Thank you. Um, so those are, are a few of the human capital challenges um, from getting in uh, to retaining talent uh, and also what happens when you just don't have a certain talent, um, which is common at, uh, at certain companies. Uh, and uh, let's move on now to lack of visibility to an economic understanding of your business. It's another common challenge for uh, growth companies. Um, and, um, and and it's very much, uh, you know, a function of the back office. Um, so let's start with um, poor accounting. Mike, I hate to call your name after I say the words poor accounting because you're all about great accounting. But, um, you know, what are the impacts of poor accounting that um, maybe folks don't think about um, and how it impacts their, their business? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think most critical is really understanding your cost structure. You know, make sure you have a revenue recognition policy and you want to be matching your revenue to your costs, making adjustments on your clothes to, to accrue for any cost of goods. Um, also deferring any revenue that you haven't earned yet. Um, it, it's essential to making sure you have a, uh, accurate financial statements. It's essential to make sure that you're you're issuing and watching uh, accurate margins. Um, and you really need to be watching and monitoring your balance sheet. It's just it's just not looking at your P and L or looking at your cash flow. It's really monitoring your balance sheet, making sure your accounts tie out, uh, making sure you understand what's on there because that's just as important to your P and L as as the P and L is itself. So there's a piece of uh, financial literacy in there as well, Mike, um, you know, capturing all of it and then actually understanding it and understanding to a sense the interplay um, between mm -hmm. p and balance sheet, et cetera. Correct. Yeah. Um, uh, great. Um, um, let's talk about, and I, Mike, I, I'm going to stick with you um, for a moment here, the importance of having complete uh, financials that one can count on. Um, you know, what happens when you don't have that? Um, and, you know, what are the impacts that you've seen and, and sort of the emergencies that you see? Um, I, I mean, I think the big thing is you don't want any surprises. You're, you know, you should be able to budget and understand what's going on with your business. But, you know, you don't want to make an accounting error that's going to make a surprise to an investor or to the bank. Um, you want to be able to understand and explain what's going on and your accounting should be able to do that but it should make it should make sense um you know and you should have the controls in place to do that so you know you really want to put in processes in place to do that you want to have procedures and you want to have multiple points of review so people are looking at, at and reviewing the data and making sure what's on there is correct right now andrea finance has a hand in controls as well um can you talk a little bit about that Um, I think you are muted. Sorry. Uh, just as an example sort of comes to mind, um, having controls in place, for example, a tight uh, spending process, uh, that in and of itself is going to make um, uh, make you spend less and um, spend on the right things, be more efficient. So uh, it's it's really important to have those controls in space in place. Uh, yeah, it's it's actually an interesting um, point to note that uh, I've spoken to uh, any number of um, CEOs, founders, who are um, kind of proud of managing their business or their business area out of a checkbook. Um, and, you know, my reply to that is frequently, well, um, if you're managing it like that, you probably don't have a great sense of exactly how much you owe to whom, how late it is, um, mm -hmm. and a sense of all of your priorities. You're kind of taking things as they come and determining one at a time uh, what you should spend on and then out of sight, out of mind. 
Um, so this is one of those areas where having process doesn't slow you down so much as it enables your entire understanding of, uh, you know, who you're paying when and why. Um, so this is one of those instances where process actually speeds things up in many ways and can make it far more effective. Um, mm. So that that's a trap I've seen a number of uh, founders fall into in particular. Um, uh, let's talk about um, lack of visibility. Um, building a company with longevity is is no small feat. Um, in addition to strategic leadership, what should leaders do to ensure they have the capabilities in place to exist over the long term and scale? Andrea. Yeah, gosh, when I think uh, longevity, uh, what comes to mind first is um, you need cash. So you need to plan effectively for when you need to add cash to the business. You need to be cash creating. You need to know when you are dipping or running up against a wall. And in order to plan, you need a forecast to do that. And uh, finance is the capability that kind of creates that forecasting capability. So that's that's what I think of when I think of longevity. Gotcha. Um, and, and that's about understanding where you're heading so you can react now rather than when it's upon you. Um, let's talk, uh, Mike, um, when folks are getting into a process for their business, um, M&A, fundraising, um, any of these sort of major um, processes for their companies. Um, uh, I think we tend to find that they're they're not always quite prepared uh, for those, and that can really set them back. Um, uh, what advice can you give to leaders around, you know, accurately and effectively preparing um, the data that the data consumers, like banks and investors, would need when it comes to accounting? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I mean, I think timeliness is a, an issue there too. So what you want to have is definitely a schedule on when the work needs to be done. And everybody involved in the process should know what's due, when it's due. Um, I mean, that's kind of key to making sure that, that your investors, your banks, they're getting the reports when they need. Um, you also need procedures, standard procedures that everyone follows, that everyone knows um, that your, your staff follows month in and month out. It keeps your financials consistent. And you also need multiple review points, uh, multiple people reviewing, making sure the work is done correctly, asking the right questions about things, making sure it's as complete and accurate as possible. And the, the goal is not to have any surprises to investors. Um, you, you, you want explanations, but not surprises, surprises down the road. Right. Uh, Andrea, um, what have we seen being um, some of the ramifications of not being properly prepared on the accounting and finance side? Um, gosh, he, not being prepared slash not understanding um, can have just a huge effects um, in these conversations with investors or other potential financing sources like a bank. Um, so if you don't understand your core economics, uh, you run the risk of being kind of a price uh, taker in these uh, discussions. And what you want to be doing is driving those value discussions because you understand your value, you understand your core economics, and it puts you in a, a far better position um, when you're having those conversations. Yeah, I think by and large, what we've seen when folks aren't prepared from an accounting and finance perspective is number one, things slow down. Um, and deals have a life cycle and a lifespan. And the longer a deal goes on, whether it's M&A or funding, um, the less likely it is to happen. I mean, there, there's a sweet spot, so they're, they're not going to close in, in two days. Um, but if they drag on because uh, your investor doesn't understand your numbers, um, uh, then you're in big trouble. Um, and if uh, someone puts an offer on the table for your company and you don't actually understand the value of your company because you haven't built the models and, and run the forecast and truly understand that, then exactly to your point, Andrea, you're a price taker. Like, what are you going to negotiate with? If they come and, and drop a number, what's your perspective based on? If you don't have that, if you're not able to articulate your uh, company's value, then uh, I guess you're just going to take that offer um, and not have uh, a strong negotiating position. So that's something you, you definitely and clearly want to avoid. Um, all right, let's go ahead and move on to process challenges. Um, there, um, 
Shannon, uh, frequently uh, there are a lack of processes from an HR perspective. Um, and it, I think it's worse than, you know, random things falling through the cracks. Um, I think it's risk and other elements. Um, from an HR perspective, um, you know, uh, what can clients be doing around their operations um, to uh, reduce risks? And what are some of the primary risks that you see? Well, for certain, HR is a highly regulated area. So a company that doesn't have strong process in place does run the risk of having non-compliance for certain things. Document retention is extremely important. Documentation is extremely important. If there are HR issues that are being resolved, investigations, terminations, et cetera, very important to keep the documentation as those things happen and to have it be available for research or for reference later on, should it be needed. In addition to that, um, there are privacy laws. We're talking about a lot of confidential and personal information, social security numbers, um, banking numbers, direct deposit, all that kind of stuff goes into a payroll record or an employee record. So important to keep those secured. And we've seen a trend of a lot of cybersecurity regulations coming through, additional information about how to handle employee records. There's also regulations that have been around a long time about how employees can access their employment data. So very important to be aware of that and to treat the information confidentially and give it the proper respect it deserves. And also to be very aware of what are the regulations? What is the obligation of the employer regarding treating their HR issues? And I will say that we see with a lot of businesses when they don't put the care into that, that they, they pay the price later in not having the information they need at their fingertips or in not having the correct information in their files in the first place. So very important from a compliance standpoint for an employer. Gotcha. Um, Mike, in the uh, world of accounting, can you uh, talk a bit more about how lack of process controls can cause slowdowns and, and uh, far-reaching financial impacts? Yeah, I mean, I think you really need to use the, the correct technology to, to manage your business on this front. I mean, front, there's so many options out there and finding the one that, that really streamlines the work, uh, makes it go efficiently, um, allows you to uh, deal with your clients deal with your vendors and move your business. If you don't, if you're not using the right technology, if you're not putting the right inputs in to get the right outputs uh, back out and reporting and information, you're really missing an opportunity. Right, um, Alicia, um, do you have a perspective on, on the process challenge? Yeah, and actually just the other day, there was a client of ours that was speaking about their really stressful experience gathering all of this information for an audit. And because they lack the right process and tools to provide that information to the auditors quickly and easily, it really made the audit go a lot more harder and difficult and taking more time. And that's eating up both the auditor's time and the company's personnel's time. Mm. So time's a constraint there. And in addition, um, in terms of the process, there's we need to have version control too. If there are too many versions of a document or a budget or anything related to that, that also really slows down a lot of things. We are taking more time to finding things rather than doing things. Gotcha, makes total sense. Um, all right, let's move on to our next uh, subtopic here, distraction from business growth. Um, that's a major challenge for founders. Um, you know, when someone else isn't doing it, founders and business leaders typically take it over themselves. Uh, and that is uh, a major uh, use of their time and um, uh, also creates all manner of potential risk. Um, so uh, I'd like to ask a couple of our experts here where they've seen that uh, have the greatest impact. Um, uh, Mike, um, when uh, you know a, a company leader or a founder is trying to do their own accounting, um, how well does that usually work out? Usually it doesn't work out too well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it, it's always tough when you see a business owner taking on too many manual tasks. Um, it's, it's a huge waste of their time to be paying the bills, reconciling the bank, dealing with their accounting system. 
rather than running their business on uh, and they may feel like they have control but there's other ways to have that control without actually doing the work and spending the time um, that's that's what bookkeepers do that's what accountants do um, and you know they can usually understand it a little bit better and and solve the problems quicker and easier and and just get back to a company owner and, and reassure them that things are being run well Right, um, Alicia. Um, the distraction problem. Um, what what, uh, what have you seen on that front? Yeah, and so not having the accounting data organized or structured in um, in a way, and really losing that information that they had ever, at some point in time. So they lose time from that. Um, something that we hear pretty often is, "Hey, I I can't find that email. Where's that email?" or or when did you send that email again? Or, oh, maybe I had it in this drive or this other place. So how much time do you actually spend on trying to find what you're looking for as opposed to sitting down with that information and thinking it through and doing um, what you're supposed to do? So spending too much time either doing yourself um, or not relying sufficiently on, on experts who can bring you the answers and uh, and then you're able to add value on top of that and, and do your business growth. Gotcha. Um, uh, related challenge um, we find is lack of communication between disparate providers. Um, the back office, I think, is a phrase that people don't really fully appreciate the breadth of. Um, you know, finance, accounting, human resources, payroll, technology. Uh, a lot of elements to it, and when um, you're managing all of that through uh, third parties, um, it can feel distant um, and uh, slow and disjointed. Um, and um, let's talk real quickly about uh, some of the great challenges there um, when it comes to um, uh, managing things like uh, payroll or finance or or having things that you, you want to be connected, um, that can create real challenges. In fact, just recently we had uh, a client where um, they had folks leaving the company and, and the payroll group knew that, but then the finance group was still forecasting those people in the forecast as if they were still part of the company. And it's like, whoosh, uh, you know, or, or I should say that, like ships passing in the night, um, they the two uh, parties simply weren't communicating. Um, and that can become a, a challenge between any parts of the organization. Um, Shannon, ha have you seen you know, any examples of uh, lack of communication between functions that um, perhaps are, are avoidable? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I would go a step beyond calling communication, communication in this case, and I would start to call it synergy because really when you have two service lines or two functional pieces within a company that are really communicating and really simpatico with each other, you see a, something that's greater than the sum of its parts. If payroll is really connected with finance, if payroll is connected with accounting, you do things like make sure that the money's in the bank before you send out the paychecks. Um, you do things like make sure that there's forecast for these employees before you go out and hire them. And so it really streamlines the process so that you don't have bumps in the road or surprises on the finance and cash flow side. So this is a way that HR and payroll, while they are generally overhead cost, they can really add to the bottom line of the organization by dovetailing into what's forecast. Uh, without a doubt. All right, um, let's go ahead and move on to technology next. Um, technology is a major issue for um, growth companies and small and mid-sized companies in general um, in that um, it tends to be um, incoherent, uh, like it's not built with a core strategy in mind. Uh, Alicia, can you talk a little bit about some of the pitfalls there and some things that uh, uh, company leaders can do um, to stay out of technology trouble and maybe get ahead of technology and make it work for them? Yeah, really, um, there is the point about scalability. What's going to work for you on day one may not be working for you six months or a year down the road. And really to implement the right technology and making sure that it all is working together, that takes effort and time. And if you're doing it and redoing it multiple times, it takes time and it's costly. And so making sure having that scalable system 
in place will really allow for um, time and saving down the road when you're maybe in midst of a fundraise, for example. So having the right technology and right technology stack is also important. Um, and I believe many, many of our business leaders have this very intuitive sense about their business and their but there isn't enough valid information for them to depend on and they have to go with their gut to make decisions. But what if there is a way to have your gut checked? And what if there are any even more insights to your business that you haven't thought about before? So concentrated, targeted, strategic information that we can provide from a technology platforms that's working together where will further optimize their business. Gotcha. Um... Andrea, when um, you're uh, working with clients um, and uh, they have technology challenges, uh, what does it do to the uh, the effort of forecasting and basic data analysis? Yeah, when you have uh, disparate systems or you have um, data being um, input at two different sources, that creates errors and um, that doesn't work well when you're forecasting. So it uh, exposes you to risk on the uh, the uh, forecasting piece of it because you're not capturing information accurately, um, and that can that can that can cause surprises to to Mike's to Mike's point. Yeah, yeah think, okay. Ooh, sorry, go ahead. I think you know a lot of business owners come to us and they know. They're asking the right questions, but they can't get them answered with the system they have in place. Um, so if they took the time to find the right system, to set it up correctly, um, to be able to get those answers, it takes a lot of pressure off them. It, it helps their business a lot, and it saves them a lot of time because you want to do it when you're smaller, not when you're larger. And most people already know what they want about. They just don't set things up ahead of time to do that. Absolutely. Um, great points all. Um, and, and actually, one other point on systems that aren't working well together, it just slows everything down. Um, and, you know, most businesses are built on the need for speed. Um, and speed is a competitive advantage, uh, whether that comes to serving um, your clients uh, in whatever industry you are, or, or to these great events, um, fundraising, getting bank debt, um, selling your company. It's just um, you know, speed is your friend and moving slowly is uh, definitely the enemy to getting any of those things done. Um, and technology is just absolutely core to that. Um, okay, so thanks um, for that great input, folks. Um, we're going to now move on to the next uh, segment here uh, of our conversation today. And uh, that is introducing uh, a new concept that Armin, you know, is launching this week. Um, and it is something that we call back office bundled. Um, and it's in response to um, some of the problems and the, the very, very long list of other challenges that we have seen through our thousands of clients over the years. Um, and uh, they revolve around the back office. Um, so uh, we have a number of practices at Armin, you know, that are, are directly in the path of the back office. We've uh, touched on the, the primary ones today, accounting, finance, human resources, payroll, and the technology that's supposed to go together uh, and make all of that work well. Uh, and what we find is that most of the small companies that we deal with do not have a firm grip on um, any of those. They're lucky if they have one or two that they're doing really well and technology that serves any of them. Uh, and it's a real challenge for them to manage um, the complex uh, uh, web of back office service providers. And frequently um, we'll come to clients and they'll have four, six or eight separate service providers, not talking to one another, not working effectively for them. Uh, and that slows down absolutely every part of their business. Um, they're entangled in it. They're not spending money on product development or on driving revenue. Instead, they're stuck managing the back office, um, whether they're trying to DIY it and working nights and weekends, uh, doing that stuff, or whether they're managing this web of providers. So 
back office bundled is a single source back office solution uh, designed specifically for small and mid-sized organizations. Uh, and it is intended to directly address those challenges. It brings together all of our uh, undoubtedly centuries worth of collective knowledge uh, across Armanino in these functional areas, accounting, finance, and HR, um, all brought together with a, a cloud-based technology backbone. That is one solution from one service provider who is an absolute expert uh, across all of these areas. Um, and it doesn't just make your back office work. It doesn't just simplify your back office. It amplifies its effectiveness and allows you to drive greater growth and profitability in your organization. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about that and, and help you understand what that offering is. Uh, and by the way, I already see questions coming in, and thank you. Um, keep the questions coming. We'll work to address those at the end. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Mike to uh, start with talking about the accounting part of the back office bundled solution. Yeah, so on the accounting side, um, really it's taking over all of your accounting transaction supports, um, handling all of your accounts payable, your accounts receivable, your client billing, um, it's handling your monthly close procedures, um, doing bank and balance sheet account reconciliations, preparing your financial statements on a consistent basis. Um, we've also set it up to provide a working capital snapshot to manage your short-term cash flow. Um, and in addition to, to the, the standard monthly transactions, it also includes your annual business filings, your 1099s, your annual business license, and your property taxes. Um, and to do that, we, we have a solution where we have a dedicated service team. There is a manager, a senior consultant, and a staff consultant who, who handle all the work. They're dedicated just for the client work. Um, they work as a team. Um, and they also, you know, they're going to handle the automated bill payments, your 1099s and your property taxes are all work through an automated system. Um, to do that, all of our solutions are cloud-based. So our accounting software is cloud-based, um, includes all your transactions and your financial reporting. It includes bill payment software. So all your accounts payable, both on the submissions, approvals and payments are handled within an automated system. And then also includes an automated employee expense reimbursement system, which interacts directly with the accounting system. So it's really A to Z complete accounting transaction to financial statements in the accounting solution. Great. Thanks, Mike, uh, for that. Let's go ahead and move on to the next piece. Finance, enter it, please. Yeah, sure. So um, back office bundle clients. Um, first of all, clients in general come to us uh, for a, a couple of different reasons, well, many reasons, but a couple predominantly, they don't have a, a good understanding of their core economics and they need to plan more effectively, more strategically uh, for their futures and chart a path for themselves. Um, and for the, the way that we help them is typically by building them a financial forecast. And that is exactly what we're gonna do for back office bundle clients. Um, building a financial forecast is a very uh, collaborative process where we obtain an understanding of how a business operates and we translate that to a forecast with assumptions and drivers that is fully integrated. And um, clients can in turn use that forecast to make better uh, data-driven decisions, to uh, plan and operate their business, and also to tell their story um, to potential investors um, from a finance perspective. So building a financial forecast is, is one of the things we're gonna do. Uh, we will also be um, creating a customized dashboard for clients as part of back office bundled. So each month the um, dashboard will be updated with metrics from HR, from accounting and from finance. Um, we will be uh, coming at this as we do uh, to all clients from a team approach um, with accounting um, uh, and HR in this case as well. Uh, and we'll be using a standardized tool for um, forecasting and creating the dashboard uh, across clients. Great, thank you. Um, all right, that's finance. Uh, next up to HR and payroll, Shannon, please. So I really have to say the HR and payroll functions being able to round out the offering here on the, you know, on this slide 
this is really where, as I was talking about before, we can see how these things all come together and create a really diversified product that is really um, an answer to a lot of the back office needs for small and mid-sized businesses. If you look here at what we're doing from the HR and payroll perspective, we really look at these things as pillars within that field. Payroll processing, benefits administration, risk and compliance, employee support. We also have options for mandatory training that's required in a lot of states, and we're seeing that as a heavy trend across the country. Our team, I can't say enough about the team, dedicated professionals within their field, many of them certified within HR and payroll, many of them certified within payroll platform technology, and people that have really chosen this as their career, and they love to read about it, love to learn. As you can imagine, HR and payroll, just as with other fields as well, but HR and payroll, largely changing, um, ever shifting legislation every year, sometimes two or three times a year with new things that come out. So we're really offering cutting edge knowledge for a bundled product offering with this. Our payroll platforms will be integrated with an HRIS system or a human resources information system, which is basically an employee database. So we're really looking to connect those in with the finance. And as we were talking about providing metrics for businesses to look in and very quickly see a dashboard of how they're doing from a staffing perspective, tenure, revenue per headcount, things like that, that business owners can really use to evaluate their performance. Great. Thanks, Shannon. Um, that's right on. And uh, now let's talk about the technology that's going to uh, pull it all together. Alicia. Yeah, really excited about the technology that we are going to use. Um, we'll make sure that the accounting, HR, um, and finance are all going to work together and talk to each other. And um, as Andrea has mentioned, and Shannon and Mike too, there will be a dashboard that displays all of these type of informations and the, allow for the users, um, which are all of our leads um, and business leaders, to see everything at once. And all the technology has been vetted and people, all of our people have a lot of training and a lot of um, background in these technologies and they are all AICPA approved. Thank you. Uh, let's go ahead and keep moving. Uh, I'm, and now we're, we're going to talk about um, uh, a few more specifics on the platforms here. Um, first, with regards to what's included, um, here we uh, see the breakout of small, medium, and large. Um, sure, you can slice and dice small, medium, and large uh, in any number of ways. So here for us, small means 1 to 19 employees, medium is 20 to 49, and then a large is 50 plus. Um, and uh, for small and medium, we have fixed fees, which we'll see on the next slide, but let's not go there yet. Um, the uh, You'll see that for small, we have all of the core HR and payroll accounting and finance capabilities uh, that the vast majority of uh, small companies would need. So it includes, um, you know, the uh, uh, all of the services that were uh, laid out by Shannon, Mike, and Andrea prior. Um, and for medium-sized companies, you get all of those, and then additional um, services and capability that we simply find um, growing companies frequently need. Um, and uh, things like moving to an HRIS um, when you're a medium-sized company, um, adding cash management uh, at a medium-sized company, uh, adding cash flow forecasting on the finance side. Um, so, you know, ratcheting up uh, the levels of service and delivery um, as the companies get larger. Um, and then let's go ahead and go to the next slide and um, discuss the actual costs. So one of the amazing things we've been able to do is come to a fixed fee um, arrangement here. Yes, there are guardrails uh, around these, um, and that's something we would uh, speak with any prospective user of the service around, um, but those guardrails are actually uh, you know, really nicely broad, and we've built them to address the needs of small and mid-sized companies. And once again, this is based on just vast, vast experience that the firm has dealing with companies of this size. So there is a setup expense that's one time 
That's typically the cost of uh, transitioning to and standing up the technology stack um, and processes uh, within each company. Um, and then the ongoing fee is a per month fee um, for all of the services that we showed on the prior page. Um, it's wonderful to be able to wrap up all of these services with just leading technology. Uh, Alicia mentioned they're all AICPA approved platforms and we have woven them together in such a way that they really work seamlessly and wonderfully uh, and provide great access to meaningful data to help you run your business. That is really what back office bundled is all about, is let a single unified service provider pull all of those challenges together, have experts with expert technology handle all of it, and then you are left to deal with the outputs. Um, you know, number one, things you don't have to worry about, which are our payroll and other uh, perfunctory functions, which you uh, many leaders spend an awful lot of time on. And the other is getting the data out of HR, accounting, and finance that help you run your business in a seamless and unified fashion. Um, so that is a bit of the pricing. Uh, and if we can go to just the next slide here. This is about learning more. Um, so Sarah, please. Yes, well, thank you everyone for staying on our call. Uh, I'm, we are gonna have our Q&A session right after the slide. So if you have more questions, please use your uh, Q&A box uh, on the webinar panel. But just wanted to show that we have a web page up. Uh, the link is uh, on your screen right now. We will also be sharing um, this deck over with you guys. So you guys have a leave behind. It's a, we call it a sales sheet. It's a one page sheet of really talking about and summarizing our, our service and uh, and our product right um, and if you could guys want to keep uh, talking having a discussion with our experts you can always reach us at experts at armenino llp.com you can connect with any one of our team members that we're presenting today um, John it seems to me we don't have a lot of questions coming in so we can maybe give back a little time to the group um, so any closing remark, key takeaways from each of the SMEs that you want to mention as a conclusion? Um, sure, why don't we just go um, in a row here and um, you can each just uh, give the, the kernel of uh, how your function would be uh, you know, effective within um, this platform. Uh, why don't we start with Andrea? Yeah, sure. Um, so I would uh, suggest that any time a uh, founder CEO is uh, spent on the doing of finance or accounting or HR really is uh, potentially time wasted and valuable time um, not spent on product and revenue. And uh, we give you that time back and we also help you chart your uh, path to your future, whatever dream state that may be from a finance perspective. Thank you, Mike. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll go back to the first point. Bookkeeping is not accounting. So there's a lot of other functions and things you want to make sure you're you're handling in the accounting function. But also you want to be working with the other teams. You want to work closely with finance. You want to work closely with HR and payroll. It all works together into, into one seamless group. And it can operate a lot better if it's if people are talking, people are communicating quickly, people are solving your problems together. Great. Thanks, Alicia. And for us, so we'll be making sure that um, providing the scalability that you need from a technology standpoint and making sure everything is talking to each other. Awesome. And Shannon? So I would say when I really think about why someone would sign up for a service like this, it's because they're probably a business owner or an entrepreneur and they want to make their mark by doing what they do and what their passion is. If their passion was payroll or accounting, they would probably be doing something like that in their, you know, we want to free up the time of those folks to pursue their passion while they know that their back office is handled and that they can sleep easy at night knowing that that's all in a row. So for those that want to make their mark, I really think that this is how we can make our mark by being there and having your back and being there for you to do back office a little bit better. That's great. I, very well said. Um, and I would just amplify that by saying not only doing it better, but actually accelerating you on your path to whatever your desired outcome is. So that's 
that's what back office bundled is all about so thanks everyone greatly appreciate your time and attention um we're here feel free to reach out uh via any of the modes displayed here and um we'd love to answer questions and, and see if we could be helpful have a great day Thanks, everyone. And just a quick reminder, we will be sharing uh, the link to the recording and deck. So keep a lookout for an email from Armenino in your inbox. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.